welcome to Dice Till Dawn and my seventh review I guess and today I'm looking at Viceroy by Yuri Zuralev, the designer uh, and published by Mayday Games and a hobby, for, hobby world actually and this is basically a shed collection drafting game for one to four players and it plays in about 40 to 90 minutes I guess I've only played it two players so uh, keep that in mind uh, but I will most of the things are applicable to all the player counts but there are some things that the two player game might lose or gain but I will talk about that a bit in my final thoughts but let's see how it plays and come back for my final thoughts here is the basic setup I guess of or all the components that come with Viceroy. I have some of my own here but uh, the game comes with these uh, tokens which represent the gems and these are fine uh, pretty high quality tokens so nothing worry there but I actually use these Eldritch gems myself which are these glass baubles I really like the feel of these and now one is on the floor anyway but yeah I really like these and the, actually the company also sells the uh, plastic kind of tokens that are just for this game so if you want those you can get them but again these are still fine there's nothing wrong with these either but basically during the game you, uh, in the beginning you get four of these character cards and you have to pick two of them to beginning with. Uh, so for example I could pick these two and the rest are discarded and one of these I can actually play for free on the table. So let's say I played the Huntress. As you can see the art is awesome in these cards and I will start my pyramid with this one Huntress. And the other card is in my hand. And I also get three of these law cards which are basically they have the same coloring but these are free to play and have some different abilities for example to score more points in the end of the game or stuff like that and also the game comes with these shields you can put your things and they are actually reminders of the things here also and uh, so your gem count is actually hidden from other players although I don't use these in a two-player game I will explain that later uh, but and also you get it's, uh, two of each gem and then you have to discard two of those at random so you start with six gems although I just played this card and I would actually get to take four more gems so during the game you play in two easy phases for a total of 12 rounds and your goal is to get most, most points by building, building this cool pyramid so let's uh, play some examples here so the first action is actually the bidding phase and after the first setup the first four cards are actually laid down here below the all of the colors of the gems and now every player would actually bid on one of these so I might actually I'm just taking one of each to my hand here and now I have to look at the cards and see which one would I like and let's say I want this one and that means that I will secretly pick the green gem if I have one uh, into my fist and every player does this at the same time and then they are revealed and if I am the only one that had the green one I will actually play it to pay it to the supply and get the green card to my hand and the others would also do that but let's say there was another pe uh, player who also beat green that means we both lose the gems and we go again and then we can actually we can talk if we want about uh, which one would we want to take and stuff like that and this goes to a total maximum of three rounds and if you don't get a card you actually get three gems back and also you only can get one card so once you get one of these cards you are out of the round or out of the bidding I guess so after that let's say these two are actually taken in a two player game then the rest of these two go to the top half you can't see them but I actually 
like this. So they are actually available for a second round and there will be actually two cards available and on the red and green, uh, yellow phases, sorry. So, okay, after that was the first phase and all, after all the bits are done, we can actually play cards up to three per round. You can play less if you want and you don't have to play, pay, play any. So let's say I want to play this card now. Now I would look at the cost to play it and the anatomy of the card is here. So there are these colors as you can see from in the top. This actually help you score more points. But the cost is here. Uh, one, two, three and four levels. So if I play it on the first level, which is the base of the pyramid, I have to pay one blue. So let's say I play it here, I can choose which side to put it on and I would have to pay one blue gem and I would get the benefit of that level. So I would get one scroll. As you can see there are a lot of tokens in the game and I would pu put this one scroll here. Okay, let's say I play another card this round and let's say I play this one. And you can see if I want to play it now, now I can play it on the second level because it has a base of two. You can't put cards on top of each other, you have to put them like this. So let's say I do that. Now I have to actually pay yellow and blue because it's on the second level. So I would pay these two if I had them hopefully. And I can place it here. And since I made a full circle of yellow, I would actually immediately get one yellow gem from the supply if there is one. But now things change a bit. I do not get the ability of the first level, I only get the second level, but they are usually better the higher you go. So in this case I would get three gems of my choice and a sword, which can be used to either outbid your fellows during the bidding phase, or in the end you actually can get uh, like take points down from other players, four points per sword if they don't have a shield. A uh, shield to counter that. Okay, so this goes on and again you have to build more and more so you can get higher. The maximum level you can get to is actually level five and the base can be unlimited. So I have seen games where I've actually only gone to like two levels or maybe one or two, three level cards or others where it's actually a big pyramid up to level five. And you go on and you score points for these different combinations. You can get straight victory points. You can get scrolls and points for scrolls. So each scroll is now plus two, two points. Or maybe you have two of these in your pyramid. So each scroll would be four points. Or you can actually get points for a set. Let's say uh, these are, this is the set. Each set of these is 12 points. And also you get points for the co complete circles and the higher they are the more points you get and all sort of things. So for example this one would also get more points for yellow circles and all these things. And you don't have to match these but it actually helps you. But in the end even if you didn't match them you can actually paint them to be the same color if you have extra gems. So I could actually paint these two to actually make it a green and stuff like that. That's just to not <laughs> make it too difficult. And you have just total your points and the game player with the most points is the winner. There is actually a sheet here that you can use to count the points. And again these law cards actually, these are free to play but they have the same coloring so I can actually play this for free on the whatever level I play it on and they have different cool abilities on them. But yeah, that was a quick overview. I didn't go through all the rules, but this was still eight minutes long and hope you understood the basics of this game. Okay, so that was Viceroy, the gameplay section. And my final thoughts. Well, this is a cool game. I've actually played this like seven games in a week or so on all two players. So there's that, but really fun. It always gives you that feeling of let's play one more game because there are so many different uh, places you can go with this and you can try to score points so many different ways that always when you start the game you feel like I want to go for these now or maybe these now or maybe the cards you get 
push you to certain director directories and stuff like that. So that's just, just so great. And there are always tough choices here because uh, you have to keep your mind at where how many gems you have and everything. So uh, you can't let yourself be put down in this place where you can't get back up where you have zero gems or stuff like that. Uh, so it's very variable and has very paths, very many paths to victory. And also I really like the actual building of the pyramid. It's just so nice to actually put these cards on top of each other and look at the colors and see the offer on which colors they have and would that fit on my pyramid and which like ability it would give on its level and you can really make a long-term plan with this. And it's great. I first, I first, I thought it's weird that you can only get one card per round, and I was like stressed out on I have to play these cards uh, uh, right away and stuff like that. But then I noticed that you can actually always play three cards, and there are pretty much no reason to just play them because they don't generate you stuff during the game or anything. So there's no reason to play them as soon as you get them. You can actually start like making this perfect combination in your hand and maybe play one card or two cards per round and try to make maximize your hand efficiency and then when you get the right cards at the right time then you just play three and three and three if you have the base down and that's just awesome because you can actually get the combos rolling uh, but also uh, I like the unclear scoring because during the game, unless you really start counting the points, you, you'll never know who's going to win. Even if you feel like you are doing poorly, I have seen that I still get a lot of points maybe. And uh, sometimes it feels like the other player is really ahead of you and you are still managed to win or maybe at least even get very close to the other player and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, some negatives I guess. Uh, the bidding I don't really like that much and as I said I only played it two players so we do it pretty differently anyway. We don't use the screens for the gems because there's no point. You can always count with what the other has if you want. And we play it more friendly so that we talk and discuss on which card would you like and which I would I want. And then if there is some contention maybe I can show that I have four blue gems so you can't really outbeat me here. And usually that's the only competitive part there. I just don't think it works in two player that well because it's just kind of pointless. And I do like the friendly banter and uh, discussion of last time I gave you that card now give me this card and you can do these deals I guess during the game and uh, in a 3-4 player game I can imagine that the bidding is more, much more interesting uh, still I don't really like the idea that much because you bid and you lose some card uh, you, you always lose the gem and if you go to the third time you actually have just lost three gems and maybe one player got it on the first gem. So that's some weird things there, I guess. And just feels kind of out of place here. I think I would like pretty much enjoy a draft or something like that. I And I think I might actually <laughs> try to then come up with some draft or something, especially for the two player. Uh, so that was one thing. And another is this might be a pretty AP prone game. If you really want to maximize all the colors and everything, you can really plan your moves very long if you are prone to that. But once you understand that in the end, you can actually just paint them with extra gems and stuff like that, it's much easier. And uh, some of the lore cards are really OP. The overpowered, I mean, uh, especially the four Kickstarter cards. There are just I just remove them from the game immediately because there's like a card that gives you one point for each card in your pyramid, and no other <laughs> requisites. So you just put it down at some point during the game, and you get 15, 20 points from the card, and the some other cards. The token changing is totally broken. It can be a 60 card, 60 point swing or stuff like that. So those are still t totally out of the game, but there are a lot of the law cards, so that's not a problem. And uh, all in all, the law cards are nice because they are free to play and you can really position them and get more out of your game that way and they are cool. So just the few ones are and I guess there's no pretty much no sense thematically on the pyramid building because yeah, what are you building? 
these guys standing on the shoulders of others. Yeah, I guess you could think of it as some kind of a power hierarchy or stuff like that, but yeah, it's it's pretty much abstract in that sense. But one more thing I forgot to mention and you hopefully saw it on the gameplay section that the artwork is just amazing in this game. The cards are one of the, if not the best art I have ever seen in a Ford game. And that's a huge plus for me. And the cards are actually pretty good quality and I have shuffled them a lot and I don't have sleeves for them and they still hold up pretty well. They feel kind of thin but they are very sturdy and you can shuffle them very well so I do really like the quality of those. And also the tokens are pretty thick so that I don't I think they will actually hold up well also. But yeah, that was Viceroy. I can highly recommend it. I was actually looking for it like a year, a year and a half and I was thinking of maybe I want it, maybe I don't, I always was unsure just because of the bidding. But now it was on sale for 20 euros and I just had to buy it and I totally don't think I made the wrong choice, I really like this game. But yeah, that was Viceroy and see you next time, bye!